Good evening and welcome to the Channel Studios here in London with your international news around the world in five. Russian President Vladimir Putin has said troops and volunteers in the eastern Ukrainian Donbass region were fighting for the motherland and its future, and he accused the West of preparing for an invasion of our land. He called NATO an obvious threat to Russia and said the Russian military operation had been necessary and the right decision. He was speaking at the annual parade on Moscow's Red Square, which marks the anniversary of the Soviet Union's victory over Nazi Germany in the Second World War. Russian news agencies said 11,000 troops and 131 armoured vehicles had taken part in the event. He finished his speech to cheers from soldiers in Red Square, cannon fire and the Russian national anthem. Meanwhile, Belarus's president targeted the West's history of international intervention during his Victory Day speech. After thanking and congratulating the crowd who gathered at Victory Square in Minsk following a military parade, Alexander Lukashenko referred to Ukraine, who he said was surviving under the boot of fascist occupiers. He said that without what he called Russia's special military operation, Nazism would raise its head again. Things didn't go so smoothly for Russia's ambassador to Poland, though, who was doused in red paint and pelted with objects as he tried to lay a wreath at a memorial. <laughs> Sergei Andreev was confronted by protesters as he tried to mark Victory Day at the Soviet military ceremony in the Polish capital. He was blocked from entering the cemetery by a crowd that waved Ukrainian flags in his face and chanted fascist. Meanwhile, in Ukraine, the country's president released a video saying his country would win in its war with Russia and would not cede any territory. <laughs> president Vladimir Zelensky said Ukrainians were a free people who had fought to defend their land many times in history and had their own path. He said, on the day of the victory over Nazism, we are fighting for a new victory. The road to do this is difficult, but we have no doubt that we will win. In the UK, the country's defence secretary, Ben Wallace, said that on their victory day, Russia was mirroring the fascism and tyranny of 70 years ago in its invasion of Ukraine. They are showing the same disregard for human lives, national sovereignty and the rules-based international system. The very system, not least the United Nations Charter itself, that we conceived together and for which we fought and were victorious together in the hope of saving future generations from the scourge of war. Voting is underway in the Philippines, with millions of people queuing across the islands to choose their next president. The man tipped to win the presidency is Ferdinand Marcos Jr., the son of the nation's former dictator. His main rival is Lenny Robredo, a liberal who narrowly beats Mr. Marcos in the 2016 vice presidential race. She was seen queuing with other voters instead of walking to the front like other candidates. Meanwhile, third placed in the polls, Senator and former boxer Manny Pacquiao voted in his hometown. A high turnout is expected of the nation's eligible 67.5 million voters, with many lining up pre-dawn on Monday to cast their votes. Officials say Sri Lanka's Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa has resigned amid mass protests at the government's handling of the economic crisis. The move came as the island was placed under curfew after violent clashes between Rajapaksa supporters and the anti-government protesters in Colombo. At least 78 people have been injured in the violence in the capital. There have been protests over soaring prices and power cuts since last month. Somalia's president has formally announced his candidacy for a second term in the presidential elections due on the 15th of May. Mohamed Abdullahi Farmajo said he was pursuing a second term in response to what he called the Somali people's call and to continue a path of progress and development. Mr. Farmajo faces stiff competition from several candidates, including two former presidents. And finally, the Titan Desert Morocco 2022 endurance mountain biking event got underway in Morocco through stunning desert scenery. The version consists of six days of racing, totally 645 kilometers across six stages to reach the Madid region. In the men's event, Francisco Herrero won the sprint against the reigning champion and his teammate. In the women's classification, Ana Ramirez was the first rider to wear the blue jersey. And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the Channel Studios in Lagos.